From the oldest of times across the vast expanse of human history, themes of multiple incarnations of an immortal soul revisiting the planet or across the expanse of the universe has been argued for years. The idea of an everlasting soul imparting itself in multiple iterations of life came to be widely known and referred to as the act of reincarnation. And though it's not a very popular belief, evidence for the event seems to be completely overwhelming. So today we'll be taking a look at some people who are believed to be reincarnations of their former selves. Bruce Witter and the Recovered Clark It's often the case that with supposed claims of reincarnation, many individuals claiming to have lived past lives will only make claims that are impossible to validate, or are vague in nature. This was not the case with Bruce Witter. From a very early age, Bruce had nightmares and dreams that would often leave him feeling panicked and restless. To solve the problems of his subconsciousness, Mr. Witter later in life began to recall his dreams and began to recall events that had occurred in a past life. He believed that he's the reincarnation of a Dutch Jewish man that went by the name of Stefan Horowitz, and he'd met the grave misfortune of being sent to Auschwitz. Interestingly, Bruce Witter had recurring dreams about a family heirloom that he could describe and draw in vivid detail. The heirloom appeared to be an antique clock with very specific designs that he believed belonged to him in a past life. After following a trail left behind by his past experiences, Mr. Witter traced the location of the clock to an antique shop he'd often seen in his dreams. As he and his family went to the shop, they'd found an antique clock in the store window matching the drawings that Mr. Witter had often scribbled down. After entering the store and talking with the owner of the shop, the dealer told them the previous owner of the clock who had sold the heirloom was a retired German major in the Netherlands, backing up Bruce's story and memories of the stolen artifact. This only worked to convince Mr. Witter and his family that he had really lived this previous unfortunate life. The Strange Case of Imad Eloir The first words that came from the child's mouth were the names Jamelia and Mahmoud. This would later go on to be referred to as the strange case of Imad Eloir. This young boy would often begin speaking in detail about his past life in the nearby village. As the boy grew older, his recollection grew. When he was two years old and had encountered a stranger from a nearby village, he'd stopped the stranger in the street and told him that he recognised him from his past life. When the stranger inquired additional information from the boy, he began reciting accurate facts and details from the stranger's life. Further claims from the boy were made that led to a full-on investigation by Dr. Ian Stevenson. Dr. Stevenson then catalogued over 55 claims made by the boy, and worked to validate them in the nearby village. The doctor then took the family and the young boy to the area that the boy had described in vivid detail, which led to even more discoveries. Imad and his family confirmed 51 out of the 55 claims Dr. Stevenson had recorded. The boy even encountered an older man known as Mahmoud that he'd recognised as his uncle in a previous life, and another person named Jamida who was his mistress in a previous life. Not only were his claims confirmed as accurate, but additional memories soon poured out of the child, being able to recall rooms at hidden artefacts and other facts about the life of his past self. The Dalai Lama Stretching back now to almost 14 incarnations, the Dalai Lama is believed to be by the Tibetan people a ruler that has the incredible ability to not only reincarnate, but to be able to choose the next form he will reincarnate into and be found as. Though many believe this to have been an old political move to selecting a new ruler, evidence of the Dalai Lama's reincarnation is profound and strict guidelines are provided to finding the newly reincarnated Lama in the times of need. It was told that when the 14th Dalai Lama was found, the priest had visions of the location of the child that would eventually grow up to be the new heir to the Tibetan way of life. Additional details had been provided by the 13th Lama before his passing of which region to search for his new reincarnated self. It's said that as the priest began their four-year journey, 
they stumbled upon the house and regions the previous llama had foretold, and a young child approached them already aware of who they were and why they were there. Further tests to prove the reincarnation was done, providing the child with a collection of toys and items. The 14th Lama then chose all the toys and items that had belonged to the previous Lama, with exact intent and recognition. If this is not enough evidence for the skeptics of reincarnation, then looking deeper into the past shows this same process occurring each time the Lama was found, and personalities and behaviours of each new Lama seem to mimic the last. Given the visions of the future, the 14th Lama has provided new insight to his 15th form, and said that his time might soon be coming. He believes this next form will be that of a woman, and that she will be found outside of the Asian territories. He also believes that upon his death the Chinese government will attempt to input their own fraudulent Dalai Lama that should not be trusted, as they will only work to systematically destroy Tibet and give it to the Chinese rule. When asked about the reasoning of his new form, the 14th Lama merely stated that the body of the Lama is not important, and is only selected if it helps the influence of the Lama in his teachings. Believing that a new female form will help him to provide greater influence and power than his current form provides. The Account of James Leininger From birth, James was often troubled by reoccurring nightmares and insomnia. As he grew up, his parents began noticing odd behaviours they could not quite understand. James, for some unknown reason, had an absolute fascination with toy aeroplanes. In fact, toy aeroplanes were the only toys he would play with, and would often have closer attachment to older models of fighter planes. As he began learning how to speak, James would often spend his time talking about flying aeroplanes, the things that were attached to certain model fighter planes and often about an accident that he had in a plane. At three years old, James began showing even more strange information relative to airplanes to his mother. In fact, one of these was being able to perform pre-flight checks out loud during his playtime with his toys. He would often give reaccounts after his nightmares saying that the middle of his engine was hit. After further investigation from his father, the boy would later recall an experience he had in a previous life, giving specific details of taking off from a ship of a co-pilot by the name of Jack Larson. Records found by the father would later show there was indeed a military aircraft carrier referred to as the Natoma, and co-pilots Jack Larson and a man by the name of James Jr. were scheduled to take flight before being shot down. Dorothy Eady Regarded as one of the most compelling cases of modern-day reincarnation, Dorothy Eady was a London-born woman who worked to solve ancient Egyptian mysteries, and was regarded as a legitimate resource used by Egyptologists and famed archaeologists around the world. Dorothy was born in London in 1904, and made the claims that she was the living reincarnation of Om Seti, a high priestess selected from birth to be the keeper of the Abida's Temple of Seti. What was so compelling of her account is that at birth Dorothy could fluently speak and read the Egyptian language. This was more than odd given the fact the Egyptian language had long been extinct, and no one currently alive was aware of how it sounded. Even those who cracked the code behind the language and the hieroglyphs were uncertain exactly how the pronunciations of certain words were handled. That was until Dorothy systematically taught and explained the language in vast detail. Egyptologists would later go on to prove Dorothy's fluency in Egyptian, after they began studying neighbouring native language that arose and evolved from the Egyptian area, and found their slang and accents to directly mimic certain sounds, words and pronunciations by Dorothy. This wasn't the height of her accomplishments, however, as she would later go on to help uncover many locations of ancient Egyptian sites buried beneath the sand, discover secret chambers and assist with the recovery of long-forgotten and hidden ancient artefacts. In 1979, the New York Times wrote a piece on Dorothy that regarded her as the Western world's most intriguing and convincing cases of reincarnation. So what's your opinion on reincarnation? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.